Yo, what is up, you two? Jane's back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2019 Back to Battles. Today, we have a brand new team, and this team is the team that Kazuki used to get top four at the Pokemon 2019 World Championship. We got Yveltal, Groudon, Tapu Koko, Metagross, Incineroar, and Mimikyu. He was able to reach to the top four after going through day one, day two Swiss, and most of the top cut. And yeah, very excited to use this team. It is something that I really want to try out for a while. I actually haven't really used this team at all. I think I've only played like two games with this team in general. But I really am excited to see how it works because I think this team is really cool. And let's just get started and play some games. But a comment question for today is let me know your answer in the comments down below. Is what was your favorite Pokemon that was introduced in Gen 7? And speaking of favorite Pokemon that was introduced, I think my top two or top three actually would be Mimikyu. A Tapu Fini and Primarina. I actually really like the, uh, not Primarina, a Poplio. <laughs> but uh, those are probably my favorites. I really love Mimikyu's design, its idea, and the fact it's actually really good in competitive play. I really like Tapu Fini in general. I just always love the water types. I think water types are probably, um, water type is my favorite typing in Pokemon, and I do just love a lot of the Pokemon. Of course, I am. My favorite Pokemon ever is Piplup. Probably just because it was my starter Pokemon when I first owned a Pokemon game. But yeah, I just really love water types. But Mimikyu is definitely my top three favorite Pokemon that was introduced in uh, Generation 7. So let me know yours in the comments section down below. I also really loved Poplio. I think Poplio was great. Um, not a huge fan of its evolutions, but they were all right in my opinion. And then Tapu Fini. I just really like Tapu Fini because I really like the design. Misty Terrain is still one of my favorite abilities, which I did mention before uh, when I asked the Tapu question. Uh, what was your favorite Tapu? But yeah, we got our first opponent, Davo, with a 1470 rating. Uh, looks like running sort of something similar. We're going to face another Yveldon with Yveltal, Groudon, Incineroar, Kartana, Tapu Lele, and Metagross. So... Kind of some similar things, but definitely a bit tricky as opposing your is actually kind of annoying for this team to handle. So we'll see how this goes. I do like leading your Veltal here, but I don't have tail. And the problem is this team doesn't have speed control other than Trick Room. I don't know if I would bring my Trick Room answer here. I definitely like your Veltal though. Um, Maybe Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko is actually pretty good because of the fact that uh, its Z-move is actually really good in this matchup. The... Tapunium Z, which is actually really good, which will summon the Guardian of Lola, which will do 75% to one of my opponent's Pokemon. So maybe Tapu Koko Yveltal so I can pick up a fast knockout potentially. I like Metagross because of the fact it can bullet punch the Lele. And I think I do need Groudon in the back. So there are a few ways that I can handle this a matchup. I'm definitely going to have to handle the Yveltal and Groudon both cautiously as those are the Pokemon that probably threaten the most damage against me. I gotta worry about what kind of Metagross this is, what kind of set it is, if it has something like a Thunder Punch or Ice Punch, that could be scary for my Yveltal, especially after uh, taking a Lele Moonblast. So we'll see what my opponent decides to do is I will lead Tapu Koko plus the Yveltal against the Yveltal Ground. So my opponent actually just leaned both restricted Pokemon right here. Um, I think that's pretty all right for me. If I could get the knock on Groudon, that'd be amazing. But of course, since this team is known, uh, they know that I carry the Tapunium Z most likely, so that could be something scary. Also, a thing to note is that the Yveltal on my side is actually faster than my opponent's. So, my opponent can go for a double protect. If this is physical Groudon, I think Nature's Madness in the Blades, I mean, Nature's Madness in the Foul Play should be able to knock out the Groudon on my opponent's side, which is something tempting. I gotta think about this Drew, because I don't have exactly have safe switch-ins to the Groudon, or the Yveltal actually, so both Pokemon are pretty prime targets, but the Pokemon that's threatening damage is the Groudon, so I think I'll double it up with uh, Nature's Madness into a uh, Foul Play here. I think Foul Play should be able to pick up a knockout. We're gonna see the Yveltal protect, probably scared of the top of Coco if it does have like a Ferium Z or Electrium Z, my opponent doesn't know the team. Uh, so, uh, I missed the first Nature's Madness, which is not good. A uh, Foul Play going to come off into the Groudon. Yeah, we would have just been able to knock out the Groudon. Can we get a miss in Cooperance? Nope. Oh, that's a great start. Is Tapu Koko just going to go straight down? So, I lose the Tapu Koko immediately, which is not good for us at all. Uh, that's actually really unfortunate. Very unfortunate. I'm going to go Groudon here. I don't think I can really go my Metagross right here. 
Ah, that just is so unfortunate here. I gotta go Groudon because the Metagross is just gonna go down to a foul play and they can't do anything. So we'll go with my Groudon here and a click eruption, I guess, in foul play and hope I can get something off. Yeah, just losing the top of Coco Media stinks. Like, my opponent could have protect Tailwinded, but that was like at least I can protect Top of Coco the following turn. This turn can't really do much of anything. Uh, we'll go for the foul play and eruption here. Against my opponent. Let's see what my opponent does. It's going to be the Groudon switching out, though, which is actually something interesting. Here comes the Incinero, though, which is a smart play from my opponent conserving the Groudon. Um, but I think it's taking the damage I need, so I don't think that's too bad. Let's see what the Yveltal goes for. Tailwind. Okay, so I get a full power eruption off into my opponent. So that's at least something beneficial here. Because I'll get some good damage onto my opponent with Foul Play and Eruption. Eruption specifically on the Yveltal. If it's not Barry Yveltal, I think I'm going to be able to get a Bullet Punch off and knock out the Yveltal. So, let's see. Oh wow, did I crit the Incineroar too? Because that did some damage. It is Barry Yveltal though, so we do confirm that. And... Let's see, is the Incineroar carrying a Barry too? Yeah, so double Barry activating on my opponent's side of the field. Again, a little bit unfortunate, but not much I can do there. Uh, probably Fake Out's going to come out and attacks here. Um, I think it's worth just going for... Maybe I should Snarl here. I think Snarl would be a decent play here. In case my opponent tries to go for like Snarl of my opponent's own side. Yeah, I think I'm going to protect Snarl. I think Fake Out's going to come out anyway into one of my Pokemon. A U-turn is also acceptable play, but at least I catch something uh, going out, potentially, if the Incineroar is faster. This goes for a Fake Out on the Groudon, which is actually beneficial here. And a Foul Play double up, it looks like, into the Groudon slot. Yep, yeah, which is fine. I'm going to be able to get Snarl off, which allows me to get some chip damage into the Yveltal, as well as the Incineroar. And I think I do have to keep turning down the Yveltal, I think... Ah, but Yveltal's not doing any damage to me. That's the thing. But we don't know the last Pokemon. It could be the Lele, which I'm a bit scared about. But I think it might still be my best interest to double up the Yveltal slot with Eruption plus the uh, Foul Play. Even, uh, even allowing Incineroar to survive, I think, at the turn. So Foul Play going to come out. Let's see how much it's going to do to Groudon. Should probably do a little bit under 50. Oh, wow. That did less than I thought. Oh, yeah, because the Incineroar intimidated me. Foul play gonna go off into the Veltal. This should allow me to guarantee a knockout with eruption here. It's actually the Incineroar is faster than the Groudon, which is actually really good news because this allows my eruption to get off onto whatever Pokemon that decides to switch, and nothing really likes taking this eruption either. And there might be the Groudon in the back, but it doesn't really matter. I'll just take the free chip damage. Lele gonna come out, so it is the top of Lele. Which is fine, and I think I can win this game because of the fact that. All my opponent's Pokemon are chipped for Metagross. Like, Metagross, I think, will be able to win this endgame if I have one more Pokemon, at least. So, Eruption gonna go off, knock out both the Yveltal and the Tapu Lele. So, Tapu Lele does go down. And, yeah, this is looking pretty good for us. Let's see what my opponent's gonna do here. Ground, I'm gonna come back out. Okay. How healthy is my... You've also took Chip, though. That's a problem. Now I'm going to Peter out, too. Hmm. I mean, there's no reason for me not to double protect here. As long as the Groudon doesn't carry Sub, we should be fine. But if it carries Sub... I mean, if it carries Sub, I'll just snarl the following turn, I guess. I'm just wondering if you've also lives a Moonblast at the range of that. Because that's going to be a really important question, I think. So Moonblast going to come out into the Yveltal slot and a Precipice Blades. No surprise there. I think it's really going to come down to either who's ground on this faster or um, it's going to come down to who's ground on this faster or potentially who's yeah I think it's going to come down to who's ground on this faster or if Yveltal lives to Moonblast. I'm going to go for the Earth Power into the Lele slot, and yeah, I'm going to Earth Power the Lele slot in case Groudon protects. Moonblast is going to come out. Let's see if this chaos the Yveltal. 
it doesn't, which is actually huge. I didn't think it would, but I just wasn't too confident. But it looks like this Evelatol, with how bulky it is in the special defense, we are able to survive, able to restore our health if it's Barry. Foul play should be able to knock out this Groudon if it does the 60% that it did last time, as it does knock out the Groudon. And yeah, that was the one Pokemon I think that was super stopping my Metagross. I needed to knock on Groudon, but I went for the Earth Power to knock out the Lele just in case. Uh, my opponent expected my Yveltal to live the Moonblast and expected me to double up the Groudon slot. But yeah, this is actually looking pretty good right now. We're going to see the Incineroar come in, but Incineroar cannot handle the Groudon. I can't even go for the Fake Out on my Groudon with the Psychic Terrain up. So yeah, we are going to be able to pick up a win. We also have the Metagross in the back that can handle down my opponent's team. So this Yveltal, super bulky and being super clutch right here. So nice, nice. As we'll go for a foul play into the Incineroar slot and an Earth Power. Earth Power will be able to finish off the Incineroar at the range it's at. And yeah, we're going to be able to take a nice uh, game one win it looks like. So foul play should do 25, 30%. Wow, that did like what, 35? Earth Power will knock out the Incineroar and that is going to be good game. So. Able to pick up the win in the first battle, which is nice. I think overall, um, let it surviving the let it moonblast was clutch. I had a feeling I would live the moonblast, but I wasn't too too confident on living it. But I don't think I had another play because I couldn't switch into Precipice Blades with Metagross. The miss on the Groudon turn one was super unfortunate because I felt like I wouldn't have uh, lost the Top of Coco and like saving the Top of Coco would have been nice just because of the fact I could bullet punch the Lele late in the late game not have to worry about the psychic terrain blocking it so my my Yveltal like my opponent couldn't really touch the Yveltal but luckily we were still able to come through because Yveltal was just super bulky and able to tank the attacks but yeah we'll continue on and find another game but yeah Yveltal being really clutch here and yeah of course that is one of the risks while running the uh nature's of madness on top of Coco but I could have maybe went for the Z-move. Again, I didn't want to waste it, but yeah. Um, ended up top of Coco just going down turn one. But we got our next opponent with a Zern Ogre team. Zern is Kyogre with Whimsicott, Landis Farian, Metagross, and Celesteela. So there's some very, very scary factors. One, the Whimsicott, if it does have something like a Worry Seed, it could catch my Groudon by surprise. There's a lot of things I do have to worry about here. Mm. Okay. I really like... Pokemon I would bring... The problem is a lot of my Pokemon are really weak to Landers. Which is a bit of a problem. Although Nature's Madison Iron Head should handle that. Uh, the opposing Metagross is also a little bit concerning. I don't think I'd bring Incineroar even though it's actually pretty good against the... Uh, Celesteela as well as I can intimidate the landers. I think the best Pokemon to bring are the Tapu Koko, the Metagross, and I think Trick Room, if I can get Trick Room up, can do really well here. I think the goal is to get Metagross into a position to win, because I think Metagross can just win the game um, under Sun, because like Kyogre can't touch it, so I think I'm going to have to really rely on the Metagross to do a lot here. I think Metagross can win this game. Uh, as long as I can deal with the Celestial too. Celestial is also a bit of a problem, so uh, we'll see how this goes. I think Whimsicott is the Pokemon that is probably the one that is the scariest next to the Landers T because of the fact that Landers, again, the team doesn't have the ground resist and I not bring the Yveltal because it is his earliest matchup and I don't feel like it's the greatest play. Um, at least for a game one scenario, but we'll see what my opponent decides to bring. And maybe Yveltal might have been worth it. We're going to see the Whimsicott plus the top. Whimsicott plus the, uh, higher. Oh, don't tell me this is Scarf Kyogre with, uh, Worry Seed Whimsicott because that would be really bad. I'd have to play 50-50s and that would be really annoying. Alright, bring up the Surge. Okay, it's not Scarf, okay. If it was Scarf, that would have been really annoying. <laughs> Kyogre going to come out, which is fine. Let's see. Uh, best play is probably to double up the ones got with uh, Volt Switch plus uh, Iron Head. 
I can also double up the Kyogre with like Z, Z move and the Stomping Tantrum too, but I feel like you wouldn't want to risk that against Tapu Koko. I think I'm just gonna go for the Iron Head and the Volt Switch play. I think it makes a lot of sense here. Especially since not all Whimsicott's carry Protect here, so we'll see how this goes. This turn could also go really badly and my opponent reads and goes for Protect Spout, but I feel like that's super risky against Tapu Koko. Yeah, the Kyogre is gonna Protect, so we do get that play right as uh, Tailwind does go up, which is fine. Uh, the problem is there is going to be a potential Landers problem because of this Tailwind. So that is actually a really big concern here. I am going to be able to go for the switch into... Maybe I should go Mimikyu? I'm thinking of bringing Mimikyu in so I can Trick Room. Yeah, I'm going to bring Mimikyu in so I can Trick Room. I think Mimikyu... Getting Mimikyu in under Trick Room is actually really important here. So we'll bring Mimikyu in. We'll Iron Head knock out the uh, Whimsicott. So Whimsicott will go down. <laughs> but now I have to deal with the Landers. The Landers is going to be an issue. I think it's Landers in the back with... Um... Yeah, it is going to be the Landers. Okay. No surprise. Hmm... I think this Mimikyu should live a spout, but I'm not a hundred percent on that. I do have to get attempted to get Trick Room up, I think. And I will just protect Metagross, I think, which is I think the safest play. As long as it's not U turn water spout, I guess. Oh, it's Earth Power. And it does go into the Mimikyu slot. I was just worried about Z move into the Metagross slot, so uh, let's see if Mimikyu can survive this attack. I don't think it can, actually. Alright, Water Spout. Yeah, that was actually a really bad play by me. I should have probably just sacked my uh, Groudon. <sighs> but I don't think... Yeah, I, could... I probably should have sacked Groudon. I didn't need Groudon. I'm going to go Groudon here, though. Because even if it was Celesteela in the back, Top of Coco should have been enough. Yeah, that was a really bad mistake. Should have just hard went into uh, Groudon. Even if I lost Groudon, I got a free switch into like my Metagross under Trick Room, and that actually would have been pretty decent. Okay, wish I had Ice Punch now, but I think two Iron Head should still be enough to tackle down the Lander. So we'll protect Groudon here. We'll go for a Iron Head. So two turns of. Yeah, one which is concerning though at least my opponent can't really do much here other than probably i think z move here we'll see what my opponent decides to do though i'm not gonna risk a tectonic rage here oh no 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 no, no. <laughs> well well that is terrifying well, I'm glad I didn't just bring in Groudon instead of just bring out Mimikyu. Metagross just dropped? Oh boy, I think that's game. <laughs> Roleplay Landis. I forgot that Landis does get access to Roleplay, but it does. Mm. Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna try to go for a double retire, but I don't think I can win. The Landers already beats me down, but my opponent makes a switch into Celesteela, which is interesting. So it was Celesteela in the back. Yeah, I should have just switched and growled on that one time. Yeah, that was a really bad play. I thought I would live Spout for some reason, but I'm pretty sure the Cac was on Origin Pulse that Mimikyu survived. Uh, based on the spread. Yeah, that really was bad. There's not really much to say. Yeah. And that's gonna be game because Tapu Koko cannot touch the land of Sparian. Well, it can with Nature's Madness, but it can't pick up the KO. Either way, I can't obliterate all these Pokemon in time, so. Oh, we're gonna be taking a hard loss for this second, ep second game of today's episode. I think that's just me not. I think that was just the worst play possible I made. I think, uh. 
that was probably the worst play possible. Like allowing my opponent to get that knockout mimic you and then just losing momentum. Then my opponent was a lot was able to catch me on the role play. So if I needed a chance to win the game, I had to sack Groudon right there. Or I had to go Groudon on the uh Instead, when I tried to attempt Trick Room, because if I got Trick Room up, I'm pretty sure that I was going to be able to win the game with uh, late game Metagross as well as Tapu Koko. So yeah. <laughs> oh well, lessons are learned. I think... Yeah, that was just a bad mistake. That was poor positioning. I also think I should have maybe attempted to bring Yveltal, because I think Yveltal was... Yveltal was probably better just because having that ground resist would have been nice and the fact that I tank one water spout from Kyogre is actually good because that means like I actually have a switch in while uh, Mimikyu can switch in with a disguise I guess but yeah <clears throat> my opponent didn't even bring the Xerneas too so Yveltal would have actually been pretty good as we got our next opponent from Germany uh this is not really a team so i think i'll just uh cut this one out <laughs> all right we got antonio from italy as our third opponent for today's episode with a did we face antonio i'm pretty sure we faced antonio we have necrozma dawn wings we have groudon whimsicott uh gardevoir top of and stock attack up. we have a pretty good matchup with our yveltal but we got to be worried about the fairy types Three fairy types on my opponent's team. I'm pretty sure the Whimsicott had Moonblast Tailwind, and I'm pretty sure we confirmed that earlier. Um, I could go Yveltal lead and play 50-50s against my opponent. Mimikyu's actually really good here, too. Mimikyu's actually super solid here. Uh, but then again, there is a Moonguise Beam. Mm. I think I should lead Yveltal Metagross because I think it's solid overall against my opponent's team. I think I bring the Tapu Koko and I think I bring the Groudon in back. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. I'm pretty sure that we can win this game by just going for some really... We're going to have to call whether the... If Lele does leave, we're going to have to call if it switches out or not. I think Bullet Punch is going to be great in this matchup though. And we'll see what my opponent decides to do. I'm pretty sure I get a free Snarl off if my opponent doesn't lead anything that's not Lele. So, let's see. Whim's got Groudon going to lead here. Okay. Ah, uh, Yveltal plus Metagross. I wonder if stomping in a foul play would knock out the Groudon. I think it would be physical on this team. Since most of the alternate Krasma teams do run physical Groudon on their sets. So foul play into stomping might be a viable option, especially since Metagross does outspeed this Groudon. Um, which might be a good play because I don't have much for the Groudon. So you know what, foul play it is and a stomping tantrum. I'm not sure if you're going to sack the Whimsicott turn one. If maybe you try to get momentum with the Groudon immediately. I think in the last opponent, I punished my opponent hard when I was using Jamie Boyd's team. So I'm pretty sure it was like my opponent went for tail and protect and I punished that super hard. So my opponent might decide not to protect too. Of course, I'm going based on a previous game, but we'll see how this works here. Helping hand coming out. Ooh, this could be interesting here as I will go for the foul play and stomping tantrum. And if foul play did 60% and the stomping tantrum does like the 40% like last time. Oh wait, that did nothing. Oh boy. Stomping Tantrum into the Groudon. Oh, that's not a knockout. It just goes for Precipice Blades, which is an interesting play. Okay. Okay. Huh. I think I just go Groudon here and I click Snarl into Eruption. Yeah. It's still a fine position for me because of the fact that I can pressure down my opponent, but this is still going to be pretty tough. Uh, my opponent gets a free protect off of Groudon in the Tailwind. Surprised it was helping in Precipice Blades, if anything. Not even risking, even risking the Precipice Blades there. Going for Fire Punch, I think, would have been safer. But we can go for Snarl here. Hopefully we don't miss, and we can go for an Eruption here into the Whimsicott slot, as we should be able to pick up the knock on the Whimsicott. 
Well, we will see probably Protect Tailwind, but I don't mind that because there's not really a Pokemon that just comes out and threatens me immediately. Especially since I can Sucker Punch my opponent's team. Especially that Groudon that's super weakened. It will Snarl. Let's see. Nice, nice damage. Eruption will be able to finish off the Women's God. So we got three turns of Tailwind. I we that I had to deal with, but at least that I knock out one of my opponent's Pokemon. It's a 3-3 game, but my opponent's Restricted is pretty weakened. And that's the Restricted I'm worried about. I'm not super worried about Ultra Necrozma, as long as I still have Yabeltal alive. So, we'll see what my opponent decides to do. Gardevoir is going to come out here, which is going to make this game really interesting here. I think I could Sucker Punch and Eruption here. Or should I just Snarl? I'm just not sure about what my opponent does here. I want a Sucker Punch because I think Sucker Punch just allows me so much momentum here. With Eruption. Because Hyper Force shouldn't knock out the Veltal. And even if you go Lele, I think that's fine. As long as it's not like a... No, I think it'd be fine regardless, even if Lele came in for the Groudon slot. So my opponent's going to Mega Evolve. Okay, so that means my opponent's staying with both Pokemon. And that means... That means I think Groudon should be attacking here this turn. We'll see. Sucker Punch gonna come out, does fire down the Groudon, so Groudon will go down. I don't have to worry about Precipice Blades into my Groudon slot, and let's see... Oh, it has Hyper Beam. Well, that changes the game. I will be able to get an Eruption off at least. And I knock out the Gardevoir. Okay, so it's going to be a 2v1, but I'm not sure whose advantage this is, actually. Going to go top of Coco here. Against Necrozma. Mm. This is tough. This is very tough. I don't know if Earth Power... Earth Power will knock on my top of Coco. It won't knock on my Groudon, which is huge. I feel like you always Earth Power to top of Coco, but I'm not too sure. I'm gonna have to call it 50-50. I feel like you tar down the top of Coco. I'm gonna go for an Earth Power and a Necrozma, as well as a uh, Protect here. Because I feel like, if anything, you're going to try to go for the Earth Power and Top of Coco later, and you just go for the uh, Z here. Because I feel like you're worried about Electro Web, but you might uh, think that and just uh, expect the uh, Groudon to protect. Let's see. You might think the Protect is too obvious on the Top of Coco. Oh, but you did target the Top of Coco. Okay, that should seal up the game, I think. Uh, that's close. And now my opponent has an option to Z-move here. How fast is this top of Coco spread? Because I actually don't remember. I think it's max speed. Yeah, it is max speed. Okay. Um, I think I Guardian of Alola here. Does Eruption do more Earth Power? I'm going to go off Single Target Eruption doing more because I don't remember the Calc. But Earth Power doesn't look like it would KO anyway. Another Earth Power and a Top of Coco. Let's see if it KOs. It does. Let's see if an Eruption will uh, KO the Necrozma. Otherwise, it's going to call come down to a certain situation, which I'm hoping to avoid here. Earth Power, Eruption. It does knock out the Necrozma under Sun, so nice. All right. Wasn't too sure about that, but we are able to pull through. So... But like my, here's the thing, my opponent couldn't have knocked out the Groudon anyway with Earth Power because of how bulky this Groudon is. So it wouldn't have, Earth Power wouldn't have KO'd, neither would have Photon Geyser. So I think we were in a fine spot as long as Necrozma doesn't protect. But I feel like you wouldn't protect Necrozma in this situation just because you're stalling out your own tail in turns. And if I decide to attack with both, I could just double protect the following turn and then my opponent's in a really big struggle right there. So... We're able to get a position where I think we were just able to... The Hyper Beam was a little bit <laughs> unexpected. Uh, I thought about it in the back of my mind, but I was like, there's no way he's actually Hyper Beam. But it turned out it was actually Hyper Beam. So 
But we were able to knock out the guard of eruption. We were able to get the call right with the necrosma targeting the top cocoa slot. And then we were just able to pick up a uh, knockout into the uh, alter necrosma slot with earth power into eruption. Uh, it could have been a different game if my opponent targeted down the ground on, but I thought my opponent would try to rely on knocking out the top of Coco, then going for a Z move into ground on, either getting the KO onto ground on with the Z move, or getting the chip to put in range of earth power, which I don't think. Like, that's what I would have had to bank on if I didn't KO, but. Not exactly too sure based on the calcs, but hope everyone enjoyed today's episode of VGC 2019 Back to Work Battles. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like down below, show some support, as well as if you want to check out Kazuki, I'll link the report in the description down below, as well as his Twitter if you want to go give him a follow. If you do want to support this channel, be sure to leave a like down on this video, especially if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below and share this video with your friends. But answer the common question down below in the description which was which pokemon which was introduced in generation 7 is your favorite pokemon otherwise if you do have tried out this team before let me know what you have thought about it in the comments down below but otherwise i think that's pretty much it you can check out the rest of my stuff down below in the description and until we battle again i'll catch y'all later